Welcome to day one of the 18th edition of the World Athletics Championships, coming to you from Haywood Field, Eugene, Oregon. We've had a World Junior Championships here in 2014 and a brilliant World Indoor Championships just up the road in Portland in 2016. But this is the first ever outdoor World Championships on US soil. Hey man. sunshine and they will be treated to the very creme de la creme of international track and field. The US has topped every medal table since the World Championships in Helsinki 1983 and it's hard to bet against them doing the same here. Hayward Field has undergone a phenomenal renovation and it's set to host a fantastic 10 days of action. 15 track sessions. We will also have the walks and marathons going on in the local Eugene Springfield neighborhood. So it's time for the mixed 4x4. We said this event's pretty new uh, to the global championships, but I love it. I think it's absolutely fascinating. First three automatically through to the final, plus two non-automatic qualifiers. Really is tough heat. Belgium in one, Poland in two, Nigeria in three, USA in four, Italy in five, Japan in six, Netherlands in seven, and Great Britain and Northern Ireland in eight. Set. So they're away in this first heat of the mix, four by four, defending champions, USA in the middle in lane four. You can see they've already made up some ground on the Italian team outside them. Edwin Goodwin making up ground on Lorenzo Bernati. It's a long stagger here in the mix four by four. The second leg runners will break down the back straight. So we've really got to look at when the baton gets handed over and who hands it over first to give us an idea of who's in the lead. This is a good run from Great Britain's Joe Breyer doing really well to hold off the march in Bonavaccia. Just drifting into the inside of his lane there. He's got to be really careful. So have a look, see who's going to hand over first. It is going to be Holland just ahead of Great Britain, just ahead of USA. Italy and Japan hot on their heels. The Polish team perhaps slightly behind, but we will see these athletes continue in their lanes and they'll break in on the back straight. Yeah, really unusual to see Poland so far behind there, but we've talked about how good the Netherlands are these days. Like a Klava the 200 and 400 meter specialist, she hits the front as we would expect. The Netherlands look good, don't they? Of course, we've got the USA as well behind them. Looking really, really strong though, Klava. She hits these 400 meters really quick, the first 200 meters, but she's holding on really, really well here. To see in pictures there of Zoe Clark from Great Britain. Italy are overtaking Great Britain now for third place. Really congested there for that third place, and you can kind of see the advantage of putting your faster athletes on the first legs. Lika Klava doing super well there, and it was a good lead off them. Um, Lee Marcin Bonavaccia Bonav for the Netherlands as well. Tony Van Diepen, the 800 meter specialist. We'll see him later on in the 800. Just trying to hold off Vernon Norwood there. That was an aggressive move from Tony Van Diepen. Um, and it is necessary. You want to hold on to that lane one position. If you can hold that through 200, you're 
runner that you're handing over to will stay in lane one. I think that's what Tony Van Diepen was doing there. He can just stay in lane one here and calmly keep his eye out for his teammate. <laughs> here we go, he's kicking again, trying to hold off Vernon Norwood. It's 1-2, the Netherlands and the USA as we move into the final leg. Nigeria just squeezing ahead of Italy down the home straight. And Justina Sviti Ercetic overtaking in fifth place for the defend for the Olympic champions. She's got to get her team past Italy and Nigeria. You can see them at the top of your picture. It looked to me like Holland and USA are running away from the automatic qualifying spots. But who is going to get that third automatic position into this evening's final? Well, Salberg still going really well there, holding on there for the Netherlands. Wedelaine Jonathan is so, so experienced. We would expect her to come now onto the shoulder of Salberg. Indeed, she does. She's having to run wide, is Jonathan. I think we were going to expect it was a USA victory. But who is coming there down the home straight? It is Poland. Can they come past Italy? Can they get that automatic qualification? Yes, they can. USA, Netherlands, Poland, first three automatic. What, as always, what a run from Justina Sviti Ercetic. She anchors so many of their relays so superbly. This is a tough start for Inaki Canal out there in lane eight. It's a long stagger. He would not expect to see any of these athletes. He would desperately hope not to see any of these athletes to his inside. Might be using the big screens. There's two big screens either end of the stadium. Right, Inaki Canal, have a look at that. Good running there for the Jamaican team, Dimish Gay, already up on Christopher O'Donnell on his inside. So it could be Dimish Gay of Jamaica handing over first. As you say, there still is a bit of a stagger to unwind, so unlike normal 400, you can't kind of assume these athletes are all running the same. It's a bit of a fade there from Gay as he comes into these final few metres, just trying to get his bat into his team. But I think everybody pretty much handed over at the same time. Might have been Ireland, just with Jamaica and Spain on the outside, pretty evenly paced as the women take over in the second leg. Yeah, Chris O'Donnell ran so well from Ireland, didn't he? Finished really, really fast. And I think just outside 45 seconds this year. But Renisha McGregor, as we expect, one of the best athletes in the world over 400 metres. Jamaica's got some phenomenal women over this distance. She's working really, really hard there. She's got that lead. Looking at Sophie Becker there from Ireland in second place. But they're just being took over by the Germans. Swab's having a great race. She's getting in closer contention from McGregor. And Spain are coming through. Dominican are coming through. You could literally throw a towel over everyone. Coffield there from the Dominican, finishing really, really quickly on the second leg. Oh, and that's, that, they've navigated that so well. There must be some super experienced relay runners down there because that was five athletes changing the baton over at the same time. Ireland doing well to stay involved, though. It was a strong finish from Sophie Becker in the end to give Jack Rafferty a, a chance. But Flor Delisa Coffill of Dominican Republic, she was miles behind when she got the baton. Uh, she was in lane one, pretty isolated, battled back really well to put her team back in contention. Alexander Orgando, fantastic individual runner, just kind of controlling the front of the field. You feel Orgando is just going to lift his pace here. This is going to be another congested changeover. And look at Jack Rafferty of Ireland, finishing hard. Kareem Bartley of Jamaica finding a little bit extra, but that some serious congestion down there. I think everybody stayed on their feet. That looks like it was a clean changeover. But the top four spaces still really tight together. And look at Rashidetta Adagliki of Ireland. She's a youngster. We've seen her winning medals on the European age group stage. But here she is against the seniors. And Mara Lady Paulina of the Dominican Republic leaving the rest of them behind. At the moment, the top three, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Ireland. That is your automatic three into the final. Can Spain find anything else in the closing stages? Or is that the automatic spots to the final. It's all to play for in the final 100 metres in this mixed 4x4. Four four. Well, Polino, the, the Olympic silver medalist, she's bringing the Dominican home. But look at Ireland. Look at Ella Henley. She's amazing. She's won a 50.7 this year to overhaul Jamaica for second position. Wow, Ireland have come here. They have done so, so well. They've made that World Championship final.
Gianmarco Tamburi with a third time attempt at two meters and 25. This would be devastating for the Italian. One of the superstars of our sport. So much personality, so much talent. But if Gianmarco Tamburi can't navigate this two meters and 25, this will be it for his world championship campaign. Everybody's heart was in their mouth. Jenny Meadows and myself just going, stay on, stay on, Gianmarco Tamberi, just glaring at that bar. Back in Group A, Wu Sang Hock. First time attempt at two meters and 28. And he makes that look easy work, miles over two meters and 28. I gotta say, Wu Sang Hock and Mutas Bashim have looked untroubled by any height. What can the Canadian captain, Django Lovett, manage here? His co-captain, Gillian Weir, she's in the second pool of the women's high jump. I'm sure she's watching on Lovett, making great, great work down here this morning. Django Lovett, first time clearance at two meters and 28. Protsenko, he's only had three jumps. A pretty quiet competition. Can he make it a first time clearance over two meters and 28 as well? So three men already clear at two meters and 28. And Protsenko makes it a fourth. Lovely clearance from the Ukrainian athlete there. So Protsenko joins Wu, love it. And Shino at that two meters and 28. Group A. Here's another look at Mutas Barshin. This will be his first attempt at two meters and 28. First attempt at 2.28. Wow, yes! This is what we love about Mutas Barshin when he's in shape. Just pings over that bar. And, and he's really enjoying it, isn't it? He's actually turning to the crowd on both of his last attempts. He almost seems like he's like, wow, that was easy, guys. I'm enjoying this. Tamburi then. Here we go, second attempt at 2.28. He's taking three attempts to get over the 225. Can make life a lot easier for himself if he clears this one. No. Oh, not to be. Hanno, we're going to have to watch him take a third attempt again <sighs> at another bar. Third attempt at 2 meters and 28. He is outside the top 12 overall on the standings between these two qualification pools. Nobody would want to see an athlete like Tamberi exit in the heats. Such a crowd favorite, such a competitor, an example to younger athletes and his peers. Gianmarco Tamberi, third and final attempt at two meters and 28. Yes! Wow, Gianmarco Tamberi is putting us through the ringer this morning. He'll be putting his dad and his coach through the ringer. Putting himself through the ring, is that a laugh or a cry? Because if I was Tamberi, I'd be crying tears of relief around yeah, right yeah. now. Look at him, bless him. Well, it was at 10 past one as the temperature began to climb here on the eastern side of Eugene, Oregon, that this field of uh, 41 athletes got underway, representing 26 nations. We knew the temperature would climb through the early afternoon period. And there were so many ambitions and hearts in mouths as the race got underway. But the writing was on the wall for many of these athletes from early on because the pace was fast and furious from the word go. The Chinese dominating the first laps, but uh, well, it was a Peruvian, an unheralded Peruvian who was to take control of things 
pretty early on in the race. The lap times became very, very consistent at around 4.20 per lap between the fourth and eighth kilometers. Garcia Leon of Peru applying the pressure and pulling away from the pack with one of the Chinese favorites, Xi, Xi, Qiang Shiji, the bronze medalist 11 years ago in the World Championships who carried an enormous amount of experience. Garcia Leon, though, broke away in the latter stages as uh, she applied the pressure kilometer after kilometer, lap after lap, this 500 meter long circuit giving no shade at all from the sun. They were side by side for a long time, the vast majority of the race indeed. And uh, with a t pace of uh, 4.25 per kilometer, Garcia Leon was walking towards a huge new national record. We all wondered whether she could maintain it up against the uh, mighty power of one of the best of China, indeed. Ki Yang's personal best at one hour 24 is uh, some three and a half minutes quicker than the eventual winning time. But eventually, Garcia Leon showing enormous determination and patience, breaking away from Ki Yang inside the final quarter of the race. And then it was Ziblo, Katarzyna Ziblo of Poland, who uh, very unexpectedly began to make inroads, having been up in the top half dozen through the middle of the race, moving into third, and then chasing down Ki Yang. That happened at around 18 kilometers, and Ziblo took reinforcement from that, pulled away from the fading Ki Yang very quickly indeed. The performance of uh, Garcia Leon, though, in the latter stages remained Quite marvellous. She heard the bell, clicked her own watch as she heard the bell, can you believe? Still very much in control of things. And uh, never gave Ziblo a sniff at any chance of catching up. The gap remained at around 20 to 22 seconds through that final lap. When Garcia Leon came across the line, it was in glorious isolation after a wonderful performance. There won't be many better, more dominant performances than that over the next 10 days at these 18th World Athletics Championships here in Eugene, Oregon. Katarzyna Ziblo coming home for a glorious silver for Poland. Delight for her and a massive new personal best and national record. As had been the case for uh, Garcia Leon. And Ki Yang did indeed hang on for that bronze medal. Reward for her for a very, very tough race. She suffered dramatically in the last two or three laps. Well, the race got underway at 3.10 as the temperatures climbed here in Eugene, Oregon. The uh, 45 starters full of optimism and hope. And indeed, the complexion of the race through the first half was much slower than the uh, women's, much different. Yamanishi, the defending champion, testing the opposition through the middle stages of the race with surges, lap after lap, and then slowing down. And Karlström of Sweden, the 35-kilometer uh, champion from Oman back in March, giving a good account of himself, lap after lap, always there, contributing to the pace. But at times it was slow and the pack was 20 or 20, 22 strong in the middle stages. But it was all building to a crescendo that was uh, unrelenting in the closing laps. The one kilometer lap offered almost zero shade for these uh, walkers as it had done for the women a couple of hours earlier. And as uh, Yamanishi, the champion, slowed on purpose there, just almost controlling the acceleration of Karlström. And for example, on that lap, going past him, so he had it all very much in control. 13 kilometers reached in uh, 52.15. The opening 5K was 20.11. The second 5K, 20.22. The third 5K, well, Yamanishi began to turn it on and impress. 19.24 for the third five kilometer segment, uh, almost a minute quicker than the previous 5K. And in the latter stages, it came down to four. Karlstrom battled on, testing his competitors in those final three or four laps. 
But the Japanese were just biding their time. And as they heard the bell, so it was the defending champion, the reigning champion, Toshikazu Yamanishi, who poured it on, dragging his teammate uh, Ikeda, Koki Ikeda with him. For a while, it looked like Kathimba of Kenya, Samuel Kereri Kathimba, would take a bronze, but he was caught eventually by the Swede Karlstrom on the final lap. Yamanishi stormed away with a monstrous acceleration over the final circuit. His final lap taking just three minutes 40 and easing away to a comfortable victory from his teammate Koki Ikeda, who ensured it was a 1 2 for Japan. The winning margin, seven seconds as he crossed the line and retained the title of world champion at 20 kilometers. The truth be told, he looked truly dominant throughout the race. Ikeda delighted with yet another silver medal and Karlstrom, a fabulously quick final lap from him to ease away by some eight seconds from uh, Samuel Kereri Gathimba. The medal's then going to proven performers Yamanishi, champion once again for Japan. Ikeda, yet another silver. And Karlstrom making it onto the rostrum for Sweden. This is the first heat of the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. The final is on Monday. And if both main protagonists make it through, and here's one of them, I think, I'm going to put this out there, I think this could be one of the races of the games. So the first of three the heats in the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. <laughs> Elba Carley has gone straight to the front, but then he looks over his shoulder, dribbles his way out into lane two and says, no, not interested, come on, somebody else do the work. <laughs> Elba Carley, the Olympic champion in the red. 600 to go. Peter coming wide on the outside of Wale just to make sure that he got a clean run at that water jump. Wale from Peter. El Bacali tucked in in fourth. Leonard Bett followed by Kibi Watt. Only the first three, remember, guaranteed a place in the final on Monday night, and what a final it promises to be. Crowd really getting involved here, Gail. They're they enjoying are. it. They are enjoying I'm enjoying it. <laughs> and now El Bacali coming up onto Wale's shoulder. Two Kenyans in hot pursuit. Leonard Bett oh, and Abraham Kibiwat. Martos is furiously driving. He's going to have to keep a close eye on the clock, but at least he turned it into an honest pace. <laughs> El Bacali from Wale, who's taking the third automatic spot. Oh. Ooh, Wale. Oh. Looks like he's going to be run out of it here. El Bacali's got this race on an absolute shoestring. El Bacali from Bett, from Kibiwat. And Genet Wale and Martos will have to wait and watch the clock. He was only 0.67 behind, but that means that Wale is not one of the three automatic qualifiers. But how about that from El Bacali? What was it? 8.16 plus, and he made that look like a jog. The yeah. Olympic champion is in top, top form. I think that's quite a good tactic from Gurma, you know, because they were running so close together. Of course, he would have been very comfortable at that pace, but he thinks, hang on, I've got aspirations of, of a world title here. I don't need someone's heel tripping me up. Anything could happen. Get away from me. And that's an indication of someone's class scale. He's been at the front for nothing more than about what? 300 meters and he split the field instantly <laughs> now coming round this time it'll be the bell now Balaji is running well in fourth place 
They take the bell in this second heat, and a KG one at that in the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. One of the favourites for gold, Lama Chagurma, leads for Ethiopia. Hilary Ball, the former Kenyan, now proudly representing the United States. Still in the mix, so too can Cessas Capruto, but Balaji, the French national champion, who's got himself up to 338 for the 1500 metres this year, he's running well on the outside. Capruto, remember, is the reigning defending champion. He's in fourth. One of these men is going to face an anxious wait to watch the clock, because only three are guaranteed an automatic spot in a mouth-watering final. Gurma looks OK. Oh, he's just motion to the rest of them. I think he was getting a little bit annoyed. So Gurma's leading, Benaji and Bohr, and Conceslas Kipruto, the defending champion. Yeah, leaving it very late, but coming home in second ahead of Bohr. Benaji will be the one who has to wait and see. Gurma takes it. Wow. I mean, El Bacali made the first heat look easy, Gurma made the second heat look easy, and as if this final couldn't get any more mouth-watering, that's the best performance I've seen from Conceslas Kipruto since he won this title, beating Gurma by a hundredth of a second three years ago. The defending champion is back. This is the first of three heats in the women's 15. Top six advancing into tomorrow night's semis. Gail Devers alongside me, enjoying this first evening session of athletics in the stadium. Gail, a lot of people quite excited about Sinclair Johnson running over the 1500 metres. She certainly caused some waves this year, not just. Uh, breaking four, but by taking the national title and beating the likes of El Saint-Pierre to that crown. She did. She's and, and you heard when they introduced her how everybody got excited. So we're looking forward to her doing great things. Johnson there in second place, just tracking Meshesha. Coming round to the bell. Georgia Griffith paying close attention to the early pace, looks like it's Vandalist uh, just on the inside, the Belgian. And Laura Muir, second from the rear, the Olympic silver medalist, finally getting her hands on a, on a global medal. I was really pleased for her because she was brave in Rio. It was a funny final in Rio in 2016, the women's 15. And Laura Muir really got caught in no man's land, as it were. And she, she took the pace on and ended up getting out burnt. And that was a year where she was running 358s and 357s for fun. So it was brilliant to see her finally uh, get that global medal in the Olympic arena, but she's uh, just towards the back and hasn't had a perfect season. How difficult is it, Gail? It, it, certain athletes seem to ride high from the confidence the season after becoming an Olympic champion, but you also see what I would sometimes describe as, a, as an Olympic hangover. Can it, can it sometimes be difficult the year after you, you've either achieved your lifetime goal of winning a, a gold, or, or in the case of Laura Muir, you've finally got your hands on a global medal, even if it isn't the gold. Can, can it be difficult to re-motivate? It can be. You know, there's also the pressures of, you know, I hear people talk about, you know, it was hard to have to deal with what's expected from you after winning, you know, and then the pressure that you put on yourself. You're the target now. And so some people take that a little different. So it, it depends on the, on the person. But yes, it can be difficult. Well, Laura Muir's face is a picture of concentration. And she now has moved through onto the shoulder of Meshesha. Johnson now a little bit boxed on the inside. Pen Freitas, the Portuguese athlete, 407 this season. And by the way, I mean, w women's athletics, it, the figures and the stats, sometimes we, we can overburden ourselves with, with ourselves with statistics in athletics. Do you know, I was thinking, Gail, when I used to watch the women race over the 15, there was something magical about breaking the four-minute barrier. So I just had a little, I just had a little, uh, a, a little tickle. Eleven women have already gone inside four this season, and, and there's still a lot of athletics to come this year. Twenty years ago, in the whole season of 202, only five did it. And, and if you go, if you go slightly, slightly slower 
it shows you how much this event has changed. In 2002, only 30 women ran quicker than 4.05. This season, we've already had more than 50. Wow. So the volume of women running world-class times in this event has doubled in 20 years. Doubled, at least. That's amazing. Right then, we've been talking about the stats and the history. Let's get back to focusing on this race. With 500 to go, it's getting tasty, isn't it? Mengesha leads. Laura Muir in second place. Johnson getting roared on by the home crowd. Georgie Griffith coming through on the outside. Meshesha Muir, Georgie Griffiths, Johnson. Really good running by those uh, at the front. And Sabatini also making it through. We've been talking about Faith Kipyegon. She's in control as they hit the bell. Listen to the roar of the crowd. I mean, they're really getting into this. Kipyegon leads. Jess Hull coming up onto her shoulder. Six in the world indoors over the 3,000 metres. So she's got really good speed endurance in her legs. Jess Hull. Adele Tracy, the former British athlete now representing Jamaica. She's in the middle of the pack. St. Pierre trying to come up on the outside. Tanaka, the early leader, just beginning to find herself struggling on the inside and might get boxed. Oh, big, yeah, big move. Well spotted there, Gail. Big move there from... St. Pierre just on the inside as Hailu comes round on her shoulder. No need to panic and no need to burn up for the win because six are coming back for the semis, joining the likes of Meshesha and Laura Muir. But it's the woman who took that title ahead of Laura Muir last year who's going to lead them home. Jaegon. Very, very good running there. I'll tell you who else came through well for a place. Hannah Klein had a very quiet race, but she came through for a top six finish. Adele Tracy ran well. Good running there from Faith Kip Yegon. Never troubled, never bothered. And I'll tell you what, she made 404 look like a job. Winnie Chabet, her experienced compatriot, is in third. And now we've got two little groups, and this front group of six is beginning to put some daylight between themselves in the second half of the field. Gail, I know you're involved in high school coaching and bringing your expertise, your passion and your, and your talent to the fore to try, try and help find the next generation of American stars. There's, there, there are no shortcuts with middle distance training, are there? No, no shortcuts whatsoever. Got to put in the work if you want the results. Oh, such, a, such an atmosphere building here, you can hardly hear them ring the bell. Yeah. And they come round now with 3.50 to go in this 30 to the women's at 15. Rudaf Sege leading, Corey Ann McGee and Lyndon Hall, the American and the Australian in second and third. Chabet still looks fine here in fourth and Nan Yondo looks like she's hanging on to an automatic spot here for Uganda. Coming round in fifth, I'm just watching her. And Trost running well. The German double national indoor champion. So these six look like they're clear and away. Although they've got to be careful because there is one more athlete trying to come wide on the outside. And she has got into the top six, pushing. And Yondo down to seven, but 402.6, so all the leading seven will come through that one. It might have been Enaui who came through late. No denying who took it, though. Kuda Sege looking really comfortable. Well, she's going to need the race of her life to beat Faith Kip Yegon, but if she can make a 402 plus change that look that straightforward, she's clearly arrived here in fine, fine form.
Ryan Krauser, the world record holder, the Olympic champion. Silver at the indoors, he had a tight elbow. Never won this title. Oh my gosh, that is massive. Oh, that's, that is incredible <laughs> again. That was seriously big. And that's qualifying. <laughs> The first of seven heats in the men's 100 the meters, the top three, games, meters coming back for the semis. Well, the Italian, the San Marino athlete, got left in his blocks there. Bracey going well, second from the right hand side. Blake coming through. Oh, how about that on the far side? Ekevo ran really well behind Bracey. And he's actually denied CJ Green an automatic place in the semis. 10.05, minimal energy expended. Blake ran well in lane five, but Ikeo on the far side, the Nigerian, who's run 10.04 this season, has got himself through to the semi-finals. Right, watch for the American to get away well, and indeed he has done. Su Bing Tan, the fast starter, is going backwards a little bit. Ash coming through, and Hughes on the far side. 9.79! <laughs> hang on, hang on, I'll say that again. 9.79 <laughs> in the first round. Cometh the hour, cometh the favourite, cometh the potential <laughs> champion. That was absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to say he's been working on his start because he got out. Wow. I knew it had been a good start because Bing Tan Su wasn't able to live with him. Hughes ran well over on the far side and it was very tight in the battle for the third place, which I think maybe Matardi's taken. Zarnell Hughes has come second in 9.97. Matardi was out dipping Ash. The Nigerian was in a qualification position for most of the race. Hughes came through for second. They're away first time. Bramel going well, Danasimento trying to go with him, and what about that from Arthur Cisse? Cisse on the far side, he takes second. Well, it's not 9.79, but that's another very, very good piece of qualification, 9.89. And Danasimento ran really well for third there. Blake will be disappointed to miss out on an automatic spot. I, it's really hard, this, because if you hadn't seen Fred Curley's 9.79, right, right. our mouths would be agog and aghast at 9.89. But I think he had a, a, a glitch at his start. He didn't, like, take off when the gun went off. It looked like he hesitated, and then he went. Really good run by Cissé as well for yes. Cote d'Ivoire. I was really pleased for him. Watch for the man in blue, he's third from the left-hand side. A little bit of pressure, Seville going well, just outside him. And also on the far side, Sakai. Jacobs is just about cruising there. Very nice qualification from Oblique Seville. Sakai did well on the far side. I, I'm not sure he's answered any questions there, really. I mean, it looked comfortable. Right. I thought he was running within himself. If anything, I don't know about you, Gail, I, it felt as though perhaps he was frightened to go faster. Is he nervous about whether his body will hold up through the rounds? You know, that's ha that happens when you come back from an injury. They can tell you you're fine, but mentally, you know, and especially if he hasn't run a lot of races before then, it's always that question mark. But at this point, he's just going to have to go.
Good start. Blake takes a while to get up into his running. Tobogo going really well, the young box one, and what a talent he is. Blake's quite happy just to stand around and watch. Tobogo, Brown and Blake making it through. This track is so, so fast. That is a new lifetime best for Tobogo. He won the World Junior title last year. And what a confident piece of running, especially drawn in the lane adjacent to someone who's achieved the heights and the feats that Johan Blake has. It's a World Junior record. Not only a PB, not only a national record, top of the pile. Coleman looked a little bit tentative earlier this season, but that's a fantastic start from him, and DeGrasse has been left behind a little bit here. Coleman easing up towards the line, DeGrasse closing for second, 10-0-8. It was composed, posed, it was controlled. Cardosa very, very nearly denied Azamati the third spot. The Brazilian was there or thereabouts in the battle for third. I thought De Grasse ran really well over the last 15 metres, so perhaps there are signs there that he is recovering from COVID. You know, he's not normally known as a, a, the best starter, but his closing speed has always been what gets him through. And I thought Coleman's start was fantastic. It was. The last of seven heats of the men's 100 metres. Which three guaranteeing themselves a return for a mouth-watering set of semis tomorrow night? Amanyama third from the right-hand side, up into his running. Sonny Brown going well, nearest the camera, and so too Unita of New Zealand driving towards the line. Those are the three qualifiers. Well, it was OK from Omanyala, considering he's had that horrendously disrupted build-up. What a fast track this is. I make that only a hundredth outside Sarni Brown's PB. That was an excellent run from him. And so too the New Zealander, who I'm pretty sure would have beaten his personal best. He was He's slightly ungainly but deceptively effective. Oman Yala lives to fight another day and he'll be probably going back to bed as soon as he possibly can. Yes, I would hope so. Get some food and get some rest. National record, actually, not just a PB for Osi and Kieta. 10-0-8. Absolutely incredible. Curly, 79. Brumel, 89. Seville, 93. All the way down to Matardi coming home inside 10 seconds. Seven men breaking the barrier. Blake looked pretty comfortable in 10.04. Sambine making it through as a non-automatic qualifier. And of course, we had that national record for O.C. Nkieta of New Zealand. Andre de Grasse closed well. Eric Cardoso, the slowest of the qualifiers, 10.18. It was a good run by the Brazilian. Miltiadis Tentoglu. He used to be a parkour exponent. Now he flies through the air for fun <laughs> and Olympic titles. Won that gold against Echevarria on count back. Here he is, European champion indoors and out, world indoor champion. This is the only title missing from his collection. Needs 8.15, jumps up from the sand in buoyant mood, gets the green flag. What a career CV he's putting together. He was 19th as a teenager in London. Then he moves up to 10th in Doha. All of a sudden, a couple of years later, he's won everything bar this, and he's the man to beat. He is the man to beat, to be honest. Ha! Huh. I'd love to see where his foot was on the board. It looked like it was millimetres. Oh, OK, 2.1. Eight oh three. Looks comfortable. Uh, 
a balmy, atmospheric evening here for a moment of history. And Hayward Field has seen a few of those in its time. Italy in one, Nigeria two, Netherlands three, Dominican Republic four, Ireland five, United States in six, Jamaica seven, Poland eight. The first track final of Oregon 2022. This could be very special indeed. We can expect an absolute roar. They have attended here in their tens of thousands. But remember, the Dominican Republic in lane four have got an absolutely superb quartet. He's going well, Feliz, at the moment. But the American, Godwin, already up and past the Irishman. Listen to the roar here. The Dominican Republic beginning to struggle here. USA clearly in first. Listen to the noise for Felix. Listen to this. It's a spine tingling atmosphere from a woman who has made this look so easy for decades. The hairs on the back of our necks are standing to attention. 36 years of age, still so smooth, still so talented, but there is no room for sentiment in sport. Paulino is coming. The Dominican Republic are closing. Two legs to go. Felix signs off in style. But will it be a medal? And which colour? Dominican Republic ahead of the United States. The Dutch going well in third. Ogando is a fine 200 metre runner and 400 metre runner. But Vernon Norwood is having one of the best seasons we've seen from him and he looks really comfortable in second place. Bartley of Jamaica has come storming round past Van Diepen, but Van Diepen's got that 800 metre strength and he's coming back at the Jamaican who might tie up here. You can hardly hear yourself here in the stadium. USA into the lead once more. Dominican Republic second. The Netherlands in third with Femke Boll. Watch to see if they can close. And the Jamaicans with Stacey Ann Williams in fourth. Kennedy Simon is being lifted by the crowd here. What a run and what a story this would be. Cofill ran so well this morning for the Dominican Republic, but I think that gap is too big, or is it? Cofill is closing here. Boll looks as though she's got third. Pretty much wrapped up here, although Williams is running well for Jamaica. She needs to hang on here, Kennedy Simon. Cofill of the Dominican Republic is closing. Has she got enough room? It's America or the Dominican Republic. Oh, you never read the script. Dominican Republic take it. Femke Boll comes through for silver for the Dutch. And it is a medal for Alison Felix. But the curtain comes down with a bronze instead of a gold. That is why we love watching sport. That is why we love athletics. Yes, there was passion. We roared for Felix. It would have been a great story. But guess what? It was because the Dominican Republic thoroughly deserved that win. They got the silver last year with a brilliant quartet. And they've come here and denied the heroine her fairy tale finish. What a result, though, and what drama. Femke Boll on the line for silver. Felix finishes with a bronze, but the gold and the plaudits go to the Dominican Republic. This World Championship is up and running and in fine style. Yes, we've come to the States and they've already delivered. It's only day one. <laughs> You're so exciting. <laughs> that was a great race.
The Dominican Republic take the title in dramatic fashion. So nearly the gold for the Dutch Femke Boll charging towards the line. Alison Felix rounds off with another World Championship medal. This time it's the bronze. We will see you tomorrow. This has already been epic.